Here's the truth. It's an intense film. We're not watching a comedy tonight. Um, it's about an hour long. Here's the good news. We assume that if you actually took the time and effort to come tonight, that there's some good reason that you showed up. Mm -hmm. And I watched the film and I thought at the end of it, what can I do? It's in Canada. I don't know these people. Well, how will I help these people? And after a few days I absorbed it, I thought, you know what? Well, first of all, we'll do a screening. Maybe I know someone in Canada. Maybe, you know, maybe we can help it get on television. Maybe we, who knows what it, can, what can happen if we see this film. So my feeling is, my personal feeling is, and Jack has an amazing ability to do this for people, just by bringing awareness, I think we're part of the healing for these people. So in a way, we're here to witness what's happening in a part of the world that I, you know, I wasn't aware of, and maybe you're not aware of, and I think that's a powerful part of the healing. Tonight is like a, a night of friendship. Um, Larry and I, who is the centerpiece of the film, and I got together 15 years ago to try and help the indigenous people of Canada together with other people. But Larry was our star. Um, if you know American politics or the civil rights movement and all, you'll remember Fannie Lou Hamer of Mississippi or Father Grappi of Milwaukee, people that I loved, respected, and felt good to be with and inspired me. <clears throat> Larry is exactly the same type of person. Uh, and he made me a Cree, and believe it or not, I promised never to cut my hair again, and I haven't cut it since. <laughs> um, but his inspiration is such that I have to actually push him to talk, and his sense of his relationship with the people is so profound that it's hard to explain. He does, in a sense, represent, like many people in the world, like Biko or Aquino or Mandela, they represent their people. Larry is one of these people. He's the only person I know in Canada. These two young Germans found him in Winnipeg and made this film about him. So when they sent, it, sent me this note that they were doing this, I was flabbergasted. And it's out of friendship that we're all here. And, uh, you know, I, I think it was Yates or some other smart Irish guy <laughs> that it said that education uh, is not the pouring in of information, but the lighting of the fire. And I, I hope you'll light your fire through this film. And I want later then we'll hear from the German directors and from Larry himself after the film. So if you'd stay after that. They'll have some words, and let's see the film, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. These are your filmmakers, and this is Larry, who was featured in the film. Yeah. Yay. All right. Um, well, before we introduce ourselves, um, we also want to really thank uh, Jack Healy, Christine Hahn, Jimmy Miller and Michael Abbott for making this possible for this documentary, for us, for the issue that um, Larry has been fighting for mainly all his life. And we, we are very, uh, feel very fortunate to be here. So, and also thank all of you very much for coming out and, and watching this with us tonight. Normally when we introduce ourselves, and we, uh, we introduce ourselves by our spirit name, and my name is, uh, Nogamo Mayagin, which means singing wolf and I'm from the bear clan. Um, my colonial name is Larry. It's <laughs> 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 a name that was uh, tagged to us at one point in our history. I've got a, a question for the filmmakers. How did this come about? Because when, I, when I, Jack told me about it, I mean, the first thing I thought of was, what is it, what's the connection between the German filmmakers right. and the folks in Canada and his... All right, um, it's a very, very long story. I'll try to cut it short <laughs> a little bit uh, for you. Um, basically, uh, the first uh, initial spark to this pro project was my uncle, who was, uh, um, uh, he retired last year. It was his 65th birthday, and he's been very close to this subject, and especially the traditions of you know, indigenous um, North American culture for a long time. And he's been uh, in contact with people that 
send emails, information uh, about you know the current political situation, and basically to inform uh, people that that they are interested. And uh, we got in contact with the person from Winnipeg who is doing um, uh, traditional healing, and. Um, uh, I started to communicate for my uncle because he doesn't speak any English. I started to translate the emails and I really got hooked on the subject. It really fascinated me. And um, uh, us being yeah, young, passionate filmmakers, we, we immediately had the idea this is a good, um, a very, very interesting subject uh, to do something about. But uh, this whole contact to this person eventually died out completely. Um, he somewhat didn't reply anymore. We still went to Winnipeg, did a lot of research, got a lot of contact information, and eventually through, um, you know, one could call it coincidence, but Jack Healy already said it may, might, maybe it was meant to be. We met um, Larry Morissette and got introduced to uh, his projects and um, before we went there, we didn't have the expectations to be able to do a documentary. We wanted to do further research, eventually do a little bit of footage, but um, through uh, this uh, meeting with Larry, he took us by the hand and he, he really, uh, it was, we were able to realize this project in such a short, short time. We've been there five weeks. And, um, you know, through really, really close work together with Larry and, um, also, you know, we, we were doing our interviews and our footage during the day, but then still sit hours and hours to get an understanding of, you know, what is going on. So that's really how it came about. Well, I think there, there was one question. For uh, Larry, you, you sort of touched on uh, that your mother was in a residential school for five years, it, but you made it sound like it was, a, was that it, it sounded to me like it was uh, sort of like imprisonment. It, it was, that, it was. It was forced. So they they, they grabbed her. They took her in. She stayed there for six years. So it was uh, it was punishment of some kind that that. that well, could you expand on that a little bit? And also uh, the idea behind behind the policy was to absorb Aboriginal people into the fabric of Canada, right? And part of it was because Indian kids act like Indians. They wanted to erase that or eradicate that thing. So they they took the kids put them in these schools, locked them up, told them their parents were drunks, told them their parents were dead, all these things. And then these kids basically went through these schools pretty much alone. And even if you went to the school, they used to split them in half, where the boys on one side and the girls on the other. And you could have your brother on this side and you couldn't talk to them. Uh, other, otherwise you would get beat. But, but the big, big issue was that if you spoke your language, you got punished. If you behaved as an Indian person, you would be punished. And it was all part of that policy where it was illegal to be an Indian. Like literally, not figuratively. So if we smoked a pipe, two or more Indians together, you received two years in jail. Uh, it, was, it was a crazy time. There was, there was apology by the Canadian government about two years ago. And then that followed by compensation for people who spent time. And uh, you got compensation depending on how many years you spent in the school. And then you got more money if you were sexually abused and you were prepared to disclose that time. Because one of the characteristics of, 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 of the school was that kids were physically and sexually abused. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> You know, when, when, that, when that's happened to you, you know, you no longer are a child. So the story came up, and I made my kids watch it, and we heard the Canadian government say, well, we're sorry, and it followed by a package. The national leader for Canada, what he did, uh, Phil Fontaine, is he went to Rome, to the Vatican, to meet the, uh, the Pope. And what the Pope said is, I'll pray for you. All right, so in and of itself, by virtue of saying that, you know, that, that we're sick, that, that by virtue of a prayer that we're sick in some way and that we could be saved in some way still as, as a people. Right? And, you know, it's just another form of, you know, colonization.
you guys started and end the, ended the film with such beautiful shots of nature and mm -hmm. of the natural beauty there. And I'm curious, Larry, the sort of contrast between the isolation and beauty on the one hand and the, you know, what has happened to the communities and and if you, other than the filmmakers highlighting that, if, if that's been a factor in, in sort of what's happened up there. Well, what, what it shows, I think, is that we haven't lost our way of life, you know, and that, that it, that's what we talk about when, when Max says, Vern and I, and we we'll talk about the, the issues. I, you know, although there's issues that go on in our community, you know, where we want the trauma to stop. And by, by stopping the trauma, you know, it includes the thinking of the old people, right? the thinking of our ancestors and, and the culture that, and the earth around us. Right? So that's, I think, what, what we were trying to get at that, that point then. What's the population there? In the city of Winnipeg, mm -hmm. the conservative uh, uh, figure is about 50,000 Aboriginal people. But we, as Aboriginal people, define it more as about 80,000. It's the largest uh, urban reserve in Canada. What's powerful to me is that there are voices of clarity. Mm. And what is it that somehow allowed you to be that for people? Because I do know your work, and it's very touching to me. Uh, I have children, and I don't want the racism and discrimination to repeat itself. I want to be treated as a, a human being, a dignified person, a person of value. You know, most people, when I sit around, I don't dress like this all the time, by the way. <laughs> you know, but, but often, you know, uh, I'm just another Indian until I start to speak. And that has to change, right? because there are many people in our community who are following this path for change. Right? And, and the idea of culture, the idea of, of, of a way of life that we have as a people is, is very, very much alive. And, you know, I, I, I hear the voices of, of, of the old people. You know, I, I grew up as a small kid with really old people. And they left those stories with me. And uh, I think that that's where the strength is, because right? I'm, I'm nothing, I'm nobody really special. Right? You know, I'm part of what you see. I've been working in a gang exit program for the last 10 years. And what I'm trying to do is get them, you know, some support to do the work and to give them a chance in life to exit that whole scene. Eh? The guys that you've seen, you know, we've been working with, we've worked with probably about well over 250 gang members eh, in, in the city of Winnipeg and, and very, very high risk, at risk. A uh, few of our guys have been murdered over the last few years that were in our program. Uh, some have gone back to jail, but some have done some good work. And, and you know, the remnants of, of their thoughts, I think, will shift kids. To, you know, I agree with Jack, that should be shown in every school in, uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, young people should have a chance to react to their world and have some thought into how they could see the change. This is a local issue but it has universal meaning in a way mm -hmm. like in every place in the world in my, in my country as much as in yours and uh, in other colonized countries like Canada especially South America Australia New Zealand I think people might find that you know find some similarities there Absolutely. Um, so far this this documentary has, has been uh, on a tour through Germany um, I think in, in Germany people are rather distant from what's happening in uh, North America and rather foreign to what was going on in Canada especially. The US, uh, I think it was mentioned before, there is a little bit more, um, you know, uh, a record of, you know, activism of, you know, what was really uh, public in the media, uh, occupation of Wounded Knee or what everybody around the world could follow. And, but Canada is, is a little bit off the map. And, and hopefully, 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 this documentary can go further because I think it's a very, uh, very important uh, subject, not just for Canada, but as you said, for other places as well. The guys that you've you, you seen 
that were touched upon and the people that were touched upon are, are very, very humble and, and people from the bottom. And that's, that's where we need to start. We don't need to start from the top down. You know, that's you know, tried and doesn't work. Right? You know, people need to be educated about the idea that they have rights, that they have human rights, and they're human beings. And that won't ho happen by way of the Canadian government, right, or any other government. Right? Because we, we, as a people, even though we're poor, mm -hmm. we have Indigenous rights mm -hmm. that are wrote, written into our Constitution that are often ignored and are, are in the process of being eroded. What I really, really need for you to understand, in, in, in my opinion, is when we tell our stories, our stories heal. When that young woman told that story about being hurt, since that film has been shown, she's got off the crack and has found a relationship. Right? And she's trying to live uh, a straight life, but she had to get that out of her, right? you know. And, and this was that gift, right? and and her idea of getting her her children back is is you know paramount right? in her life. Right? But if we can't describe our stories, then we're just bullshitting to one another. Right? You know, we're not we're not being honest. Right? Our world as we know it. Right? We have the capacity and we have the ability to heal ourselves. You know, we, we know what we need. If we can't speak the truth, then we're imprisoned in ourselves. And it's everything that Jack talks about. And I, I respect this man a lot. The idea and that we can be free. That's so, so important. You know, for my children, for my grandchildren. I'm a grandpa, by the way. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I want those kids, and the ones I love, the people I work with, to have that chance. Eh? And if they don't make it, they don't make it. Eh? But at least we need that chance. Eh? And that chance is reflected in who and what we're about as a people. Eh? So this idea, when we talk about, as he talks about the shield, this medicine wheel, right? this is a medicine wheel as we sit and we talk. Right? This is counsel, this is sharing, this is healing. This is that movement towards change. Right? So with that, I'd like to say thank you, miigwech, and end it by saying, which means thank you for this wonderful day.